I absolutely love resin 3D printing miniatures. However, one of the downsides is that resin miniatures are often really brittle compared to store-bought miniatures. In the past, I've used Elegoo Water Washable, Elegoo Standard Resin, and Sunlu Resin, and I've had fine results and good experiences with them, but they do break easily. And after complaining about this in a recent video, I had some companies reach out and offer to send me some supposedly tougher resin. So we'll be comparing these tough resins to each other and to some of the standard resins I've used, but let's meet our contestants. They are, first off, the Elegoo ABS-like resin, which retails for $32.99 right now on Amazon. The Jamgi, and maybe I'm saying that wrong, Conjure Tough and Conjure Rigid resins, which are currently available for $39.99 and $33.99 on Amazon. And the last tough resin is the Amerilabs TGM-7, tabletop resin, which currently is selling for $90 on Amazon. Now I feel like it's normally more than the $80 range, but still quite a bit more. So it's going to have to really impress to justify that higher price tag. And then my standard resin here, Sunlu baby, $21.99 for a kilogram. Incredibly cheap, and I'm happy with the results I get from this. The Elegoo water washable resin we'll also be looking at, I don't have a bottle for, but I think it was about $32.99 at present. So while our focus here is the toughness and durability of these resins, price is honestly a really important factor for a lot of us too. And there are also a couple other factors that I'm going to put after our breaking tests, and those are first off the experience, how well do these print and how many print failures did I get? And secondly, the level of detail you can get with these resins on your miniatures, which I thought would be not a very big issue. I didn't think there would be a very big difference, and boy was I wrong. So I encourage you to stick around to the end of the video to hear more about those but I want to get on with the destruction. Now, I do want to give a huge thank you to Crippled God Foundry for sponsoring a video in which I absolutely destroy their miniatures. The miniatures I'll be using here are a bandit shaman and an orc marauder. So to test the flexibility of these resins before breaking, we are going to be using this protractor and I'm going to be bending some parts. Uh, this is Sunlu resin. This is the cheapest of the bunch, not one of the tough resins. So for flex tests, I'll be breaking the daggers and horns on this bandit shaman from Crippled God Foundry. And uh, you can notice that the dagger does not really bend very much as I pull it down from zero degrees. I would say it broke at about 15 or 20 degrees. For the other dagger, I stood it upright and just saw how far I could bend it out behind the miniature. And this one, not very far at all. It's very brittle. Broke it probably about five or 10 degrees. And lastly, I just decided, let's try to break some of these horns off here. And yeah, there was just no flex on the Sunlu resin. They just broke right off as soon as I tried to move them. Next up, we've got Elegoo ABS-like resin. And you can see that this dagger is flexing a lot more. It made it almost to 90 degrees before breaking. So that's pretty impressive. For the right dagger with an upright miniature, it made it to about 100 degrees before breaking. So again, much better. Horns way more flexible on this thing, but still ended up breaking pretty easily overall. Next up, we've got the Conjure Rigid, and uh, this one was really flexible. Uh, the first bagger, dagger bend, I actually couldn't break it. I had to hold it at a different angle to bend it back even further, and it didn't end up breaking until finally about 150 degrees bent backward, so pretty darn good. The other dagger didn't bend nearly as much, however. I would say it probably only went around 50 degrees, so not quite as good. The horns overall had a decent amount of flex. I would say a little bit better than the Elegoo ABS-like. Next, we've got the Amerilabs TGM-7, and this first dagger broke pretty quickly, probably at about 40 degrees, I'd say. The next one was a bit better at probably about 70 degrees. While the headdress horns felt a little less flexible initially, I actually did have a really hard time breaking them all the way through. So hardest to break so far. Now onto the Conjure Tough Resin. This stuff feels the toughest and uh, it definitely holds less detail than the others. But yeah, I had a hard time breaking this dagger. Got it almost to 180 degrees. Likewise with the other dagger, I was able to bend it all the way around to 180 degrees and it still didn't break. But you know, if you bend it back and forth enough, pretty much any resin is going to break. Now the headdress horns actually weren't that hard to break, but uh, those daggers though, those were impressive. So for our bend test, I gotta say the Conjure Tough and Conjure Rigid resins probably performed the best. 
followed closely by the Elegoo ABS-like. Now, before we get to our drop test, if you are looking for high quality 3D printable miniatures at a great value, I highly recommend Crippled God Foundry, who is my sponsor for this video. They offer a monthly subscription on Patreon or My Mini Factory for high quality 3D printable minis and terrain, perfect for hobby painters and gamers alike. While the minis I'm breaking in this video are from previous months, this month's bundle is The Cursed Sultan, which has a bunch of cool creatures and villains with a theme I would describe as Arabian Nights meets Vampires. Their monthly packs are such a great value, and I personally support them with an annual membership, which gives you the lowest price when you break it down by month. They also include paper minis, in case you need something for game night right now and don't have time to print or paint, and you get a PDF each month that includes unique stat blocks and lore for the incredible creatures they come up with. So go check out Crippled God Foundry via the links in the video description. For our next test, we're headed out to the driveway with our Orc Marauder, and we're dropping the miniature from two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet, about seven feet, and then probably about nine feet up by the roof line. Now, rather than show you all 40-ish drops individually, I thought I would just kind of summarize the results here. So you can see that Elegoo water washable resin, yeah, it pretty much shattered right away. It was not very durable. The X's here means that there was no additional damage at those heights. The next resin I put to the test was Sunlu, and you can see that at four feet I had a glue fail. What that means is that the only break was at a joint that I glued, so it wasn't really counting as a true break in my opinion. And yeah, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done a miniature that had any glue, but oh well. At five feet we did get a true break as the sword broke out of the hand, and then you can see at seven and nine feet there was no damage. With the Elegoo ABS-like resin, I did all the way through and I even dropped it twice from nine feet and there was no damage. With Conjure Rigid, I did not have any damage until we got to seven feet and then it did break in the middle of an arm. At nine feet, no damage, but then I dropped it again at nine feet because I was determined to break something else and did have a leg break at that height. For the Amerilabs TGM-7, I did have a glue fail at two feet, so that doesn't really count. And then we had no breaks, even dropping it twice from nine feet. And lastly, we had the exact same thing happen with the Conjure Tough Resin. And I will say, this stuff was bouncy when I dropped it from some of the higher heights. That miniature really bounced, it was actually hard to find. Now I was not satisfied with the level of breakage I got on these four tougher resins, so I decided let's give them a throw against the concrete. So while not being a very scientific method for testing breakage, it was immensely satisfying and they all lost some bits, but nothing super conclusive in terms of one being way better than the other here. So the Elegoo ABS like the Amerilabs TGM-7 and the Conjure Tough really performed the best in the drop tests, but I will say it's hard to control the exact angle at which they fall, and that largely does determine what's gonna break on these miniatures. Even though I dropped them all the same way, you just can't fully control it. For our final durability test, I am holding a four pound sledgehammer over the miniatures and dropping it from a height starting at two inches and going all the way up to about seven inches. The first miniature we'll be smashing is the one in Sunlu, and from a height of two inches, this thing absolutely shatters. Uh, yep, no point going any higher, it's in many pieces. Elegoo ABS like resin is my next victim, and from a height of two inches, I did break it in half, yep. So that was a quick one. Now I was afraid they were all gonna smash pretty easily, but then I came up against the Conjure Rigid resin and this stuff was really tough. Started to see some cracks around four inches, but by the end I was just having to wail on it to actually break it apart. Next up, the Amerilabs TGM-7. So with this stuff, uh, yeah, had a hard time breaking it. Definitely noticed a crack again around four inches. Crack about halfway through. Six inches nothing, seven inches nothing more. So then I started wailing on it and it broke apart pretty quickly once I applied a little extra force. 
For the Conjure Tough, my camera battery died after I hit it from two inches. So you see me hitting it from two inches, nothing happens. Then there was a whole lot of other attempts with nothing much happening. And then finally you see me hitting it with some downward force at seven inches, which is what finally did the job. So yeah, definitely living up to its name. Some pretty tough stuff. So for the results of our hammer smash test, I gotta say it's pretty much a three-way tie between these three resins. We've got our Conjure Tough, Conjure Rigid, and the uh, Amerilabs TGM-7. The Sunlu resin, not surprisingly, was quite bad. And uh, I wasn't super impressed with the Elegoo ABS light compared to these other three. So that concludes our destructive test, but I promised a couple other really important factors before anyone makes a decision about which resin you might like to buy. We need to talk about the user experience, how easy these are to print with, and we need to talk about the level of detail in your miniatures. So for the experience, I really had good experiences with all of these resins except for the Conjure Tough and Conjure Rigid. Now that's not to say I never had any print failures with these. Over the last two years of printing, I've had my fair share of print fails. But these two, I really struggled with a lot to get them to print well. And part of that could be because in Lychee Slicer, there aren't any print profiles that I could find for the Elegoo Saturn for these resins. So I did tinker with all sorts of settings, including the layer height, the lift speed, the exposure time and all that stuff. Just trying to get miniatures that would print completely with these resins. And then I realized much later that the minimum temperature that they recommend for these resins is actually 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is far warmer than any part of my house, unless it's summertime. So that could have been a really big factor and it's something to be aware of with these resins. And the next factor, detail, I was really surprised how big a difference there was. So let's get down and take a closer look at the miniatures. I did some side-by-side -side comparisons here and it does appear to me just with my naked eye, that this Elegoo ABS-like resin is just slightly more crisp than the Amerilabs TGM-7. But then I pulled out the Conjure Tough and compared it to the Elegoo ABS-like, and wow, huge difference. I didn't think it would be this drastic, but yeah, the Conjure Tough is clearly less detailed there on the left, just a lot less crisp in all the details. Look at the hair, it's incredibly noticeable there. And the Elegoo ABS like that I'm comparing it to isn't even the most detailed. I would say that my standard resins have a little more detail. If we pull out the Elegoo water washable here on the right compared to the Elegoo ABS like on the left, I think I'm seeing more detail, just more crisp edges on the one on the right. So to summarize my findings with detail, the standard resins at the top there are definitely the most detailed that you can see the most crisp edges on those. And then the other three in the middle are totally in the acceptable range with the Amerilabs TGM-7 being slightly less detailed than the other two above. In the poor detailed range, we do have the Conjure Tough, which to me, even if it is a lot tougher than the others, this would not be a level of detail that I would be happy with in my miniatures. However, if perhaps I would consider mixing in some Conjure Tough in a ratio of like maybe 10 or 20% with some of the other resins. Now, just to throw one more wild card in the mix, I do want to mention exposure time, both on the printer and in curing can affect how durable a print is as well. And overexposure can make it more brittle. So that's just something I want to throw out there. But in terms of making a decision here, it's tough. There are two immediately that I'm taking out of the picture in terms of the tough resins. The first one is the Conjure Tough. Yes, this is the toughest resin, but the level of detail is just not acceptable to me. I still wanna try it as a mix-in, but as a standalone, this is out. The next one that's out is the Amerilabs TGM-7. I would say this probably had the best balance of being super usable and easy to print with, and also being durable. So it's great, I do recommend this resin, but at 80 or $90 per kilogram, I just can't see it being worth that much more. Am I missing something about this one? Feel free to leave comments below if you know something I don't. So in terms of the tough resins, that does leave a tough choice for me in these two. The Conjure resin is my preference in terms of the end product, but the usability definitely leaves something to be desired. I feel like I need a little more experience and practice or just tinkering to find the best settings to get more reliable prints with this stuff. This stuff, very reliable, but the hammer tests were pretty poor. Now, granted, how often are you gonna be in a situation where your miniature is being pounded by a sledgehammer? Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, 
Tough choice between these two. I can recommend both if you have the patience to find the right settings for this one. And I'm not ready to throw out the Sunlu yet. Honestly, at $21.99 per kilogram, I still like this resin. It gets better detail than either of these, in my opinion, just a little more crisp and sharp. And yeah, you gotta be careful with it, but I, I still feel like I have to be careful with these too, to some extent. These aren't gonna hold up to something like a Reaper Bones miniature. So anyway, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours as well down in the comments below. And before we go, I do wanna thank the WASD20 patrons for their support. Patrons are people who support the channel on a monthly basis. I couldn't do what I do without them. So thank you so much, patrons. They also get some pretty cool rewards, things like weekly live map drawing streams with me. So check it all out over at Patreon patreon.com slash WASD20. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.